Dinah, the story of lust, desire, and unimaginable revenge. In this video, you will hear the story of Dinah, a tale filled with lust, desire, and vengeance. Although Dinah's story in the Bible is relatively short, it's packed with intriguing twists and turns. It all began on a rather unpleasant note considering what happened to her. However, amidst the chaos, there are valuable lessons we can extract. The story takes place within the book of Genesis. Dinah, the sole daughter of Jacob, went out to meet some young women from the neighborhood, perhaps looking to make new friends and trying to understand the lay of the land. As she was out and about walking alone in the streets, she came upon a man named Shechem, the son of the city's ruler. In a rather unfortunate and tragic scene, Shechem took advantage of Dinah. He sexually assaulted her. Jacob, upon learning of his daughter's defilement, chose to remain calm and wait for his, his sons, who were out tending to their livestock. Later in the evening, when the sons returned home, Jacob discussed the incident with them. As you would expect, Jacob's sons were rightly appalled and enraged by what Shechem did to their sister. They were not only outraged by the incident, but also by their father's reaction, who cautioned against any form of vengeance. But it was clear that the brothers were not going to accept the abuse of their sister and the insult to their family unanswered. So, from that moment, they started to plan their revenge, unbeknownst to their father. What Shechem did to Dinah was as abhorrent then as it is today. But does it call for the extreme retaliation that the brothers are contemplating? Well, I will let you be the judge once you hear what they did. Tell us in the comments section if you think Dinah's brother's actions were justified. However, before the brother could carry out their revenge, there was a twist in the story. Shechem, the rapist so of Hamor, who was the ruler of the city, came to Jacob to ask for Dinah's hand in marriage. For Dinah's brothers, this was like adding salt to a painful injury. After defiling their sister, the prince had the audacity to come ask for her hand in marriage? As for Jacob, he did not respond to the request as he was still enraged by what the man did to his daughter. Still, he did not do more than that. He would not avenge the dishonor of his daughter. Instead, it was Jacob's sons who expressed extreme anger and indignation, rightfully condemning Shechem's outrageous actions. Shechem's father, Hamer, sensing the disaster his son has unleashed, quickly moved to make amends. But what could he ever do to make up for the defilement of Jacob's daughter? Still, he made a rather interesting proposition to Jacob and his family. He said, My son Shechem has set his heart on your daughter. Please give her to him as his wife. Let us intermarry and build bridges between our families. We are willing to give you our daughters in return. You can settle among us as the land is open for you to live, trade, and own property. Shechem also, adding to his father's plea, approached Dinah's father and brothers, saying, Please, let me find favor in your eyes, and I will grant any request you make. Name your price for the bride and the dowry, and I will pay whatever you ask. Just give me this young woman as my wife, for she has been defiled. To modern listeners, it may seem that Shechem and his family were repentant and trying to do the right thing. That may be so, but it is also possible that it was their plan all along. In those days, in some cultures, the only penalty for defiling a woman was to marry her. Perhaps Shechem had this in mind when he decided to unjustly sexually attack Dinah. In any case, perhaps sensing the treachery, Dinah's brothers sought to orchestrate their own deception. They said to Shechem and Hamor, We cannot do such a thing. It would be a disgrace to give our sister to an uncircumcised man. However, if you and all your males undergo circumcision and become like us, we will agree to the union. We will then give you our daughters and take yours. We will live among you and become one people. But if you refuse to be circumcised, we will take our sister and leave. Shechem and Hamor found the proposal agreeable. They did not expect to be confronted with the condition of circumcision, but they are locked in now. They have to accept the condition, which they wasted no time in fulfilling, as the prince was apparently infatuated with Dinah. After this agreement with Jacob and his family, Shechem went to his people to address the men of his city, telling them, These people are friendly and seek to live among us. 
Our land has ample room for them. Let us marry their daughters and allow them to marry ours. Of course, the people agreed to the command of the prince and his father. The men of the city agreed to the condition that all their males be circumcised, just as Jacob's family was. Without wasting time, every male in the city underwent circumcision, as they believed it would lead to the union of the two families. Throughout this ordeal, Dinah's father seemed oblivious to the anger still brewing among his sons. Three days later, while the men were still nursing the pain from their circumcision, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took up their swords and launched a surprise attack on the unsuspecting city, slaughtering every male in their path. The men of the city, who were still in pain from the circumcision, stood no chance against the raging attack. Simeon and Levi showed no mercy to anyone. They captured Shechem, the son of Hamer, and rescued Dinah from his house. They left lifeless bodies strewn across the city that had defiled their sister. They seized livestock, donkeys, and all other properties they could find in the city. They carried away wealth, women, children, taking everything as plunder. When Jacob, their father, who was completely oblivious to this premeditated attack on Shechem, Hamer, and the city, heard of the revenge attack, he was livid. Deeply outraged by the actions of his sons, Jacob sent for Simeon and Levi and reproached them, You have brought trouble upon me, making me detestable to the Canaanites and the Perizzites living in this land. We are few in number, and if they gather against us, we will be destroyed, I and my household. But Simon and Levi were unapologetic. They said defiantly to their father, Should he have treated our sister as a prostitute? Genesis 34, 25-31 by compelling the men to undergo circumcision as a strategy to weaken them, Simeon and Levi got revenge for their sister. In the midst of the men's pain, Dinah's brothers, Simeon being the older and Levi the younger, avenged their sister by slaughtering all the males in the town. They pillaged the city, leaving Hamer and its people in ruins. Jacob was deeply troubled not only by the assault, but also by the uncertainty of their ability to establish a lasting presence in the land. He feared that the neighboring tribes, who outnumbered them significantly, would seek revenge. Jacob's trust in God's promise to protect his family in the land wavered. Although Shechem violated God's just laws and committed violence against an innocent woman, Jacob's sons, in a twisted manner, used circumcision, a sacred symbol of the covenant with God, as a deceitful tactic to murder far more individuals than were guilty. As we delve deeper into this story, we can extract meaningful lessons that apply to our lives. Firstly, Shechem, the son of Hamer, held the status of royalty in the land. However, his entitlement and lustful spirit had an uncontrollable grip on him. Indeed, it is natural for attraction to arise between a man and a woman. However, when desire drives a person towards sexual sins like sexual assault, it becomes dangerous. The right course of action would have been for Shechem to approach Dinah's father and ask for her hand in marriage. Instead, he chose to forcefully abuse her in such a horrible manner. This highlights the importance of never allowing the spirit of lust to control our actions. Although he eventually did what he should have done initially, it was akin to administering medicine after death. The seeds of discord and hatred had already been sown by his initial act. Our flesh, if left uncontrolled, becomes a dangerous master that can lead us towards destruction. Proverbs 14 verse 12 reminds us that there is a way that may seem right and straightforward to us, but its end leads to death. This truth aligns with what transpired in Shechem's story. As for Dinah's brothers, they refused to take his actions lightly or live with it, their sole focus was revenge, which they meticulously executed. Once we start to contemplate evil, the devil will gladly flood our minds with the necessary ideas. Satan, being the master of every wicked scheme, will readily provide strategies as long as we are willing to act contrary to God's will. While it is undeniable that what Shechem did was unquestionably wrong and inexcusable, Wiping out his entire family was by no means God's idea, but rather Satan's. The lesson to be learned here is that we must not allow the devil to kindle an unhealthy thirst for revenge. In today's world, 
there are legal systems in place to address such matters. Therefore, it is wiser to let the authority decide the appropriate course of action against the offender rather than committing murder in a misguided attempt to avenge a loved one's pain. Romans 12, 19-21 conveys a related message. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave the way open for God's wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome and conquered by evil, but overcome evil with good. After exacting vengeance and annihilating Shechem's family, the question remains, what was their reward? Was justice truly served in the end? Jacob, their father, was deeply distressed by the entire ordeal, and God, understanding his anguish, instructed him to leave that area. Genesis 35, 1-4 it is clear that the children of Jacob had deviated from living according to God's ways, instead have succumbed to the prevailing ungodly culture surrounding them. This moral decline reached such a point that they could carry out a mass murder without any consideration for God's law. Let us pray. Dear God, I thank you for the liberating power of truth. Thank you for teaching me the lessons on lust and revenge derived from Dana's story. I ask for your divine wisdom guiding me to always seek your ways and your will. Let your love and not the lust of the flesh rule my heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please support this work by subscribing to our channel. Click on the notification icon to get more videos from us. If you are so moved by the Spirit of God to give, please donate for this project at patreon.com slash Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.